Hello, my name is Liz Kleina Hess, and I am a professor at Capital University in Columbus. Today, I'm going to talk about using free publicly available data for classroom activities. So using data in the classroom uh, can be really helpful for a lot of different things. Great for class activities, for projects, assignments, things like that. But um, unfortunately, a lot of the really good sources of data um, come at a cost to students, faculty, or the institution. Uh, other times, they're just very hard to access. Um, so one example uh, of a data set that is frequently used is Social Explorer. Uh, it is really easy for students to use this to find lots of different information. Um, but it is quite expensive uh, for individuals. It's $125 a month. For institutions, it's $1,350 to $7,500. Um, and, you know, while that may work for, you know, larger, more prestigious universities, right, for regional colleges and schools that, you know, don't have that same amount of money, uh, they, it's just going to be too cost prohibitive to them. And so then they won't have access to that same data that those other students do. Um, and then the New York Times and Washington Post uh, also oftentimes have a lot of interactive charts that can be really useful for activities, uh, but they do require an individual or institutional subscription. There are some colleges that have an institutional subscription, but it is very expensive for the university, uh, and you also wouldn't want students um, to have to purchase it themselves. Um, and if they, they just try to use it without a subscription or put a paywall up, they may think that they need to pay for it then, and you don't want that. Um, so there are uh, a lot of sources, though, of free publicly available data um, that is easy to access and doesn't cost anything. Uh, one of those is the U.S. Census website. This really has data on a lot of different topics. Uh, the Bureau of Labor Statistics Occupational Outlook Handbook. Um, this provides a lot of information on different jobs. Um, the U.S. segregation map uh, uses census data to create a interactive map that students can click on where they can look at particular metro areas and what segregation looks like there or what it looks like over time. Uh, there's the eviction lab, which also uses census data um, to provide this tool where you compare uh, eviction in different cities or different census tracts. Um, I'm going to talk about two of these in particular, but I do recommend checking the other two out. Um, so I'm going to talk first about the U.S. Census. Or actually, sorry. First, I'm going to talk about uh, some of the benefits of using this. Um, and so these free publicly available data sources, right, they provide students with sources of data they can use for assignments, papers, and projects. Uh, and they can access them anytime from any device. They don't have to be on a school computer. They don't have to be logged into their school account. Um, and it provides students with sources of data that, in addition to using in the classroom, they can also use on their own uh, if they want to learn more about different topics, occupations, places they're interested in. And I find using this data can provoke long and engaging discussions related to the topic. Uh, I find that when students are looking at uh, data before we have a discussion, they tend to be a lot more engaged and the discussion tends to uh, last longer and go into more depth on that topic. And it also helps build analytical skills, and that is obviously an important skill in the job market. Uh, it turns students from passive learners to active learners. They're not just listening to a lecture, they're doing something. Uh, and it allows students to apply course concepts to real-world examples. It also allows them to learn more about their local area, uh, as well as compare it to others. So the U.S. Census data website uh, is one of these sources that I really like to use, uh, and it's data.census.gov. Uh, and this contains information from the decennial census, uh, the one that's taken every 10 years, and the American Community Survey, uh, which is conducted much more frequently uh, on a smaller sample size, but still quite large. Um, it's good for classes uh, in a lot of different fields, uh, the social sciences, geography, urban studies, uh, and really any class where you want to have data on the local area, where you want to have some statistics, or where you want to have some statistics about the U.S. Uh, as well. 
And you can type a topic or location you're interested in in the search bar, and the website will bring up tables and maps on that particular topic or location. There's location profiles that you can use. And generally, when I do this type of activity, I usually give students a worksheet to fill out where they're going to be looking for particular uh, you know, aspects of, of data, particular topics and statistics that they will look up and they will fill out on the worksheet, either by themselves or as a small group. And then after they do that, I will have some questions for them to discuss with a small group or the full class uh, related to what they found, analyzing what they found and relating it to things from class. So this is the census data website, uh, which is data.census.gov. You can see uh, I have circled this search bar. And you can look for topics, locations, uh, specific years in here. Um, so for example, if you wanted to learn about poverty um, in Ohio, you could search for poverty in Ohio. Or if you want to learn about uh, how long commutes tend to be to people's jobs in Chicago, um, you can search for commute in Chicago. Um, and you can even look at a particular year if you would like as well. And so if I search for poverty in Ohio, as an example, uh, this is what will come up. And so it gives the poverty rate 13.4%. You can see that there's also a number of tables. This, this is just three of them. There's at least 10 other tables on there and they're all related to poverty, but they all have you know some different statistics and things like that. Um, and so it also gives just a little bit of information on Ohio uh, on the side of that as well. Uh, and you can use the, the plus sign to look at a set from a particular uh, year. Otherwise it just defaults to the most recent year. And uh, so this is if you clicked on that first table, you see this data here. Um, there's a lot of data. There's a lot of stuff if they scroll up and down and right and left, just a lot of stuff to look at. Um, this one has information on the poverty level uh, and also information on, you know, who's below the poverty level and things like that. Um, you know, they could use it, for example, if they want to look at how poverty varies by age group, you know, are there more children that are in poverty than adults? And you can also see there's a little geos thing on the top. Uh, you can click on that to change the location you're looking at. There's also a lot of other tools up there. Uh, most of those are a lot more complex, but there are tutorials on the US Census data website uh, on how to use those things if you want. Um, another useful thing with the Census website is that you can um, look at Columbus, Ohio, or whatever location you want to look at. Uh, you can look at cities, you can look at counties, you can also look uh, at the state level. And so here I searched for Columbus, Ohio, um, and you can see that you get a little kind of some quick facts about that location. And then if you click on one of the areas I circled, you can get the full profile uh, for that city. Um, and so you can see up here um, the populations and people, um, and this gives you some information on demographic factors in Columbus. But you can see at the top, there's also a lot of other topics. And if you click on those, it kind of skips to that section of the data. So there's data on income and poverty, if you want to look up you know, median income, things like that. Education, if you want to look at the educational level of the population. A lot of different things related to employment, like the percent employed. Uh, what the average commute time is, the industries that most people are employed in in that area. You can also find information on housing, health, families and living arrangements, race and ethnicity. And there's just a lot of different things that you can look at. Uh, another source of data that I use is the Bureau of Labor Statistics Occupational Outlook Handbook. This provides data on occupations in the US, uh, including things like median pay, entry-level education, number of new jobs, and the projected growth rate. Um, and so this is great for career planning or career exploration classes and workshops. Uh, I also find it to be useful for social science classes, uh, and it'll provide a lot of information helpful to business classes as well. You can search for an occupation or browse occupational groups. Uh, it allows students also to learn about careers that they're interested in. Uh, it can be used for a lot of different activities, such as looking at job growth and pay disparities. 
Um, and then here you can see what this website looks like. Um, you can search for a particular occupation looking at this. Um, and so there's a search bar at the top, which got a little cut off. Um, but you can also see that there are occupational groups. So you can go through there and choose an occupational groups. It'll give you occupations within that. If there's not a particular job that you want to look up, but something else that is interesting you, um, you can use those drop down menus um, to look at things, you know, to search by things like pay or entry level education if you just want to look at uh, things with bachelor's degrees. So uh, I searched for an occupation on here, uh, occupational therapist. And so this is the profile on that occupation that will come up. It has a little video that students can watch. Um, it also has the median pay in terms of salary and hourly wage, the entry level education. Um, it also has the job outlook, which says whether the job is expected to grow or decline in the next uh, about 10 years. And so here you can say, see that it is 12%. So that is a job that is experiencing a lot of growth. So, you know, if students are looking at occupations to go into, obviously this is one where there are a lot of opportunities. Uh, and then there's also other information such as, uh, you know, what people do in the jobs, what the work environment looks like, things like that. Um, and so I have found all these activities to be really helpful. Uh, some observations that I've made are that students do tend to be a lot more engaged when doing these types of activities when they're using data. Um, they're really paying a lot of attention. They tend to be really interested in what they're doing. You know, they have to do something for this activity. Um, and students spend a lot more time answering the discussion questions that relate to the data they just looked at than discussion questions, you know, that aren't related to some data. Uh, I also find that they actually oftentimes get really excited when they're looking up this stuff. They just find it really interesting, uh, especially if they're looking at like data on their local area or area they grew up. Um, and also, if you want to use this data for uh, a, you know, assignment or project or anything like that, um, or you want a student to do research using this, right, by doing class activities with it, it then allows the students, um, you know, a lot of knowledge on how to do that so they can get started quickly. Um, and students also seem to pay more attention and observe more information when they are we're looking at data on that topic. Uh, so overall, I think that this is really useful in classrooms. Uh, and I think finding free publicly available data is the best way to do it. It's going to be affordable to institutions uh, and students. You know, uh, no cost. Um, and I find that it's just really helpful. And using these free data sources, they're still oftentimes pretty easy to navigate. You don't have to necessarily pay for something like Social Explorer. And that's what I have. Thank you.